Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Make Art. My name is Sarah Cray and we do different watercolor tutorials every single week. We break it down step by step, tell you everything we use so you can paint along with us. This week we are doing our October wreath. Just fun, simple, fun. fall feeling, great decor, you know. If you were to say there's a fall sound. What? If you were to say there's a fall sound, what would it be? Like dried leaves. Yeah, wrestling. yeah, the crunchy, the crunchy yes. leaves, maybe. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just checking. Okay. So, um, a little info about this project. This is part of our October subscription box. If you are a subscriber, you got our fun travel paint sets in your box. Um, but if you bought the individual kit, so not a subscriber, but you bought this wreath kit, it comes with liquid paints. So I will actually be painting this tutorial with both. The left side, I will be using liquid paints. The right side, I will be using pan paints. What a wonderful collaboration. Have I done this before? No. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> We're just gonna see how it, how, it, how it goes. Bear with me. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. Yes, so the four colors. So for our liquid watercolors, the four colors we are using are red, deep yellow, space blue, and black. And black is gonna act as our gray, so I'm adding water to it, okay? For our pan paints, or cake pans, I don't, technical term, I'm not sure. We have red, no, hold on, let me make sure, let me make sure I have the names right before I say it. I'm pretty sure I have them right, but I wanna make sure. I thought those were candy wrappers. <laughs> These are the wrappers that the, <laughs> the pants came in. And I just wanna make sure I don't confuse the names because I'm known to do that. I think I'm good, okay. So we have red and we have Daisy, which was the flower at my wedding. Yes. And we have Navy. And we have Gray. Okay. So the colors are slightly different from each other, especially between the space blue and the navy, but this was the closest one. And actually, if you mix a little bit of the black with the space blue, you'll probably get a closer color. So that is that, my friends. Okay, so The steps that we are going to do for this project, step one, we are going to sketch this. There is no outline with this project, but don't let that scare you. I will draw this along with you. It, it's not as scary as it may seem. Step number two, we are going to do the blue wash. Step number three, we are going to paint the sunflowers. Step number four, we're going to paint the leaves. Step number five, we will paint the berries. I just called them berries. And step number six, we will do the lettering in there. So six steps. Now this is our first run of tutorials without having our live paint alongs to accompany them, which means we're just gonna add a little bit to it. Um, I am going to do a warm up with you of the techniques that we will use in this project. And also we're gonna do our oath. Exciting. Yeah, so if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. <laughs> I promise to have fun. <laughs> and I love starting that way with painting, especially if you're coming new to it, because we have a lot of judgment and expectations with ourselves. And I'm just here to tell you, there's no room for that here, especially if you're learning. You know what I mean? Okay. So the warm up that we mainly are just going to go over, and the biggest one is just how to do a value change from dark to light. Value is all about the lightness and darkness of a color. It doesn't have anything to do with the color itself. And so the technique we're gonna be using a lot of is basically getting a really dark value. So I'm gonna be picking up a lot of paint 
I'm putting that down and then I'm just going to use water to spread it. And every time I add water, my values get lighter. So I'll do the same thing with the pan. And this is how we do this fade around our wreath. So it's a negative space painting. We are going to be avoiding like the leaves and the flowers and doing blue around the shapes. And that will define our shapes. And then we're just going to add water to like blend it out and transition out. Okay? That is our main technique with this project. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to go over. Nope. We're ready to go. So, to draw this project, get a circle shape that you can trace. Um, of course, pay attention to its size and how it relates to the paper. If you do like a cup, then your wreath is only going to be that big. So, like, do something that's appropriate to the size that you want. Like that. Okay. And then, after you have your circle wreath, um, what I then do is I draw the elements of my wreath. So I just did um, leaves, like sprigs of leaves in a circle with little batches of like sunflower and fall leaves. You can customize this to whatever you want. You can do pumpkins, you can do bats, you can do flowers, you can do any, excuse me, anything. Options are endless. So I'm just gonna start on one side and I'm just gonna follow the line that I made and do leaves this way. And you can decide how small, how big you want them, all of that, it's completely up to you. Okay, so there's one. And then I'm gonna do a sunflower kind of right here. So for my sunflower, I'm gonna do an oval and then I'm just going to have the petals coming off of it. Now sunflowers, how they are distinguished from daisies is they have huge brown centers and small petals in relation to that huge brown center. If your center is too small, it's not gonna read as a sunflower. Mm. And I'm just doing it more basic, just really more simple. Um, and I'm going to do three dots. And it's important that you draw this out before you start painting since we will be painting around our wreath and doing negative space painting. So you want to have this fully drawn out before you actually start painting, which honestly is one of my least favorite things to do because I just want to start painting. But you know, sometimes you got to plan. And then I'm going to do a little maple leaf. And maple leaves have like five stem, five veins, and then um, ocean wave edges. Could circle your wreath with candy corn. Genius. Yeah. Okay. And then um, just keep on going all around. You can see that I'm staying mostly on the center of the line where I drew. So most of the stuff is feeding right through the center of my plants or flowers. Some of them poke off a little bit and that is okay. It's okay if some of them kind of branch out. Um, but you'll notice that it will take shape as you're drawing it. So just kind of pay attention to it. And all of these leaves that I'm doing are all going to go in the same direction. No, they're not. The <laughs> Sorry, I just... <laughs> Never mind. All of the, le the leaves on this side, the top leaf is facing up. Leaves on this side, the top face is uh, to the right. So it kind of is going this shape. Does that make sense? Yes. But you can have them all go in one. It, do it doesn't matter. Yes, Keenan. You might do a different layout since you're doing, you're splitting it half and half. Oh yeah, so all, okay, so I'll split it in half. I'm gonna mark it where I think half about is. And I will have all the leaves going on this way to the left for this half and then to the right for this half. Yes? Nice. Okay. And, um, because we're painting our sunflowers and our leaves different colors, you kind of want to sp space them out roughly even. Um, but again, that's your personal preference. Like for example, if I didn't put this yellow sunflower there and I didn't have any yellow or orange right there, 
then it would feel off balance. Does that make sense? Yep. So just, you kind of want to space it evenly so the color balance feels even. It's kind of like balancing a tire, you know? When you get new <laughs> tires and wheels, you know, make sure they're balanced. It's exactly like balancing a tire. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Here's my little sunflower. I'll put little berries around it. It's going to go up this way. And I'll just do berries here. And then starting this way. And you can see my leaf size is kind of changing from each leaf. That's okay too. Don't let that freak you out. We could probably fast forward through the rest of this drawing since I'm not doing anything more. Yeah. So just kind of continue on till you do the entire wreath. So we're gonna start with step two. Oh wait, 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 sorry. We didn't finish the drawing portion. I'm gonna just roughly outline my word. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, um, sorry, I don't know what that is. Um, Sometimes, if you're not super comfortable with lettering, what I do, since I'm not super comfortable with lettering, is I actually will letter my word first and do the lettering part first, and then I will paint my wreath because a lot of times what happens is I paint my wreath and then I go to do my lettering and my lettering kind of looks like crap and then I'm so mad because I ruined that entire painting. <laughs> so I'll do my lettering. I'm not going to do it this time, but if you're not super comfortable with lettering, do your lettering first to make sure you like it and then take the time to do your wreath. Okay? But I'm just going to do the, the, the word. So I'm just going to write October. And if you are not comfortable lettering and you have no idea what I'm talking about or where even to start, welcome to Let's Make Art where we have lettering videos. We have quite a few lettering videos by our awesome lettering artist, Nicole Mayuki. And uh, she has beginner series, she has tips, she has it with markers, she has it with paintbrushes, she has it with pens. She's so great. So if you wanna learn, just like get out of this video if you're on YouTube and just like find our lettering channel it's under Let's Make Art, so it should be right there. So. And on our lettering Facebook group, there are like previous Q and A's that might be more specific. Yes. There are a lot of questions for the last. Part. That's called Let's Make Art Lettering. Yes. If you want to be a part of that group. So I'm going to take what I learned with Nicole, and I'm just going to do my. And I just draw mine letter by letter. Okay. That feels pretty good. It's a little to the left, but I can deal with that. And maybe what I'll do to make up for that is do like a little like loop de doo up here. So then it takes up that space. Nice. Okay, now we're ready to paint. So this step, step two, which is our blue wash, is gonna be the longest step. So just bear with me on this, my friends. It's gonna take a while, but it's okay. So thinking back to how we did our warm up and our transition, I am going to get a lot of blue paint. I'm going to start with my pans on my right hand side. And I'm just going to start outlining my leaves. And you also want to outline your stem. You might accidentally make it um, thinner or thicker in some places, your stem. That's okay. Don't let that stop you from this doing this entire painting. I am using my round six paintbrush. Um, I also have a round two handy, which I will most likely use um, pretty soon actually, because it's kind of hard to do these like smaller detail areas with a bigger brush. So it's going to be this darkest value around the um, Actually, I'm gonna switch to my two. Around the actual foliage is where the value is gonna be darkest, and then we add water and blend out on both sides from there. 
So your, your round two, because it's a smaller brush, it might be easier for you to uh, work around some of these spaces. Is this negative space painting? It is negative space painting, yeah. So negative space painting is when you paint around your subject to define your subject. Okay, so that's where it's the darkest, right around the wreath. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna rinse my paintbrush like I did in my warm up and just add water. And it might be easier to do this with your six actually. And blend out. Now you can see I'm doing this in sections, so I'm not doing all of the dark value and then blending out. And the reason for that is usually the longer something um, like paint has to dry on the paper, um, the harder it is to blend out to get a really smooth transition like you could get a hard line that way. So that's why I'm gonna do it a section at a time. But you wanna make sure as you're getting closer to the middle that you're adding more water so it really lightens up. Okay. Very nice, so that is the start of our wreath with our cakes. I'm gonna to switch to do the liquid um, for the beginning and then we'll just go on from there. So, for my liquid ones, I'm gonna take my space blue and add a tiny bit of black to tone it down. If you want your blue to be saturated, you can just use that straight blue. I wanna to tone it down a little bit to try and match this one, but it's, it's still gonna be different, so don't freak out on me. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I think this space blue actually has, I feel like the navy with the pants have like more of a, like a purple undertone where I think this space blue, and we'll see when we add water, I feel like it has like a greener warm uh, undertone, like a warmer one. I'm but gonna trust you. We'll find out. And I'll see if I can see it. Okay. That's what my gut is telling me, but we'll, We'll find out once I add water to it. Um, a big difference between these paints besides um, the uh, way they're, that one's liquid and one is hard, is that cake pans usually are light fast. Um, which means that in the sunlight they won't fade as much, where liquid watercolors are usually dye-based. The benefit of dye-based watercolors is that they're usually more vibrant and can get a much more saturated color with dyes than with pigment. But um, the downside to that is in direct sunlight they will fade over time. However, even if you use cake watercolors that are light fast, um, you still never want to hang original watercolors or paintings in direct sunlight anyway. So like, yeah, if you want something to last for years and years, get a lot of protective on it. Okay, so you can see next to each other, these blues are slightly different. And I stand by my thing. See how this one seems a little bit more purple mm -hmm. than the liquid? But now I'm okay I with that. It. Now you see it, yeah. And then I'm just going to blend and just use my water to transition out. And the brand we're using for the liquid watercolors is Dandelion Paint Company, which is our um, in-house brand. If you're using Dr. P.H. Martin, the equivalents would be slate blue, black, Scarlet and that yellow, probably the closest one would be a daffodil yellow. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. Pick up some more of my navy. I'm going back to my cakes on the right hand side. And probably when we get like halfway through this wreath, we can fast forward this too. 
Okay. Okay. Because our people have pause and stuff so they can catch up and then. And that way this tutorial won't be like two hours long. Now when you get to the sunflower, you want to make sure that you're really defining these petal shapes. So try and just be aware of the, the shapes you're making when you're painting. But it is, it's like an opposite way to think. It's difficult for me sometimes to paint this way, knowing that like painting around it is what's actually shaping it instead of actually just painting it. It's a different way to think. So um, don't be too hard on yourself if you're struggling with it. Just takes practice, okay? So I got my dark value, and then I'm just gonna use water to blend out. Now I will say that we teamed up with um, Art Philosophy from Prima to make these um, paints for us because they have a bunch of different travel um, colorways and they were my favorite travel set that I used in my time of trying a bunch of different travel sets. I really like the colors they choose to include. I really like um, the creaminess of them and the vibrancy of them. So that's why I prefer their paints and they have like a ton of different sets and a bunch of different colors um, and they're just, they're really gorgeous. And so if you're interested in trying their full sets, they come with 12 colors. Um, you can get those at letsmakeart.com. They're gorgeous. And I wanted you to try them, which is why I thought it'd be fun to do it in a subscription box. But this is a custom palette that they made for us. So you won't be able to find a kit with these exact colors in it from them. They do go on the paper really smooth though. Yeah, they do. Kind of shocked me. I don't know why it shocked me, because I've never experienced any other paint other than watercolor, <laughs> but. The other travel set that I did like um, was uh, Daniel Smith. Their um, cake pans were like butter. But what I've noticed with travel sets generally and why I think I really like art philosophy so much is they tend to use really general colors like color, like primary colors that are good for mixing but like the colors themselves, I don't know how to say this, they don't have like a ton of personality where like I love that they have like 10 different sets with different um, colors because I don't want to have to sit there and mix everything all the time. Sometimes I just want like the fun, exciting colors ready to go. So that's also why I really like their travel sets is like every artist, every person has a tendency to like certain colors more than others. Like some lead to lean to blues and greens, some lead to like pinks and, and yellows or, you know what I mean? Like everybody is different. And I like that you can like choose a color palette that you like, that you tend to lean towards already, and all the colors are already there and they like tone match each other. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, because we're doing this section by section, you might get some lines in between of when you do your section. So what I do is I work those lines back and forth and try and let them overlap so it doesn't feel so chunk, chunk, chunk. You know what I mean? Think so? You're just going to work the space. So like when I go to do the liquids on this side, there's going to be this edge right here where I stopped here and then added this one. Um, and there was one right here. I'm just going to work that space back and forth. So then it feels more fluid. fluid. Yes. And if you lose your dark value from blending too much, um, you can always go back and put them in. What I tend to do to help me so I don't lose my dark value is when I'm outlining with the dark value and I go to blend, I only go to the edge of the dark value. I don't like 
go to the other edge of the dark value. Does that make sense? So I'm only touching the side of it. And that way this intersection still stays dark. Yes, that does make sense. Okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my liquids. And I have it already mixed. And I'm just gonna work it. Like here I'm going to my flower and I'm seeing I didn't focus on my petal shapes very well when I did my first run through. So I'm just gonna go in and reshape it and I'm actually gonna switch to my round two. It's a more detailed area. And you can, with this wash that you're blending out, you can overlap your lettering. Don't feel like it has to stop before it gets there, because that would probably feel a little bit weird. Oh, and I forgot to say this with the cake. I'm going to switch over to the cakes on the other side. Um, I like to also mix my gray with my navy too. Now, um, if you're not used to pans, and actually I had to learn this because one of the reasons why I was scared of using cake pans is I like to mix my colors a lot and so what happens is then like the tops get dirty because you're mixing. So example if I was mixing orange with my red and yellow, now my yellow is dirty. But, so easy. I don't know why I was so stressed out. You just, if that happens, even if it's dry, you just get it wet and then you take like a paper towel and you pick up the top layer and then it's clean again. Dang. Okay, so don't let that stop you, but that's why I actually didn't use cakes for a while because I'm like, well, now that color is dirty and I'll never get the yellow. It's always gonna be orange. And then like some artist I follow or something, somebody asked her that question. She's like, you just wipe it off with water and a paper towel. And I was like, oh my gosh, duh. <laughs> so if you're running into that, you are not alone because that was me too. I was just gonna ask you that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Especially as you're mixing like the gray in there too with that blue back and forth. Um, or if you're like really OCD, you could potentially use a clean brush, grab yellow, put it on the palette on the side, rinse it, grab red, put that up there and mix that. However, ain't nobody got time to do all of that. No. <laughs> But you can, that's an option too. I don't because I'm, I just wanna paint is basically what I'm trying to say all the time. And, and I don't wanna like have to wait to do that, so I don't. Okay, so at this point, we're just gonna fast forward through the, the rest of this. So I'll see you when this is done. Just keep going like how you're going. And go. finish coloring our wreath. Good job, you guys. I think the benefit also of doing the tutorial like this, like we'll have to do with October with the liquid in the pans, is you can like compare them next to each other, which I think is great. Like it's just good information for you guys. You might be leaning towards one or the other. In terms of like blending, um, I feel like they both blend about the same. 
I do notice that I am getting, and this is true with pigment-based paints anyway, so if you use Daniel Smith or Winsor & Newton or things like that, you get like a pigment texture where it's almost granular. Can you see that? Yes. Um, that is true, more true to pigment-based paints. There's nothing wrong with these paints. That's just how pigment works with water. And actually, um, I like that. I just did a landscape actually with pigment-based paints that had this kind of thing, and it just created the most gorgeous texture on my watercolor paper. So don't see that as a bad thing, but if it bothers you, know that that doesn't happen with the liquids as much. They usually blend a little bit smoother and don't always have that granular texture the way that um, pigment does. So again, it's all about preferences. So there's no right or wrong, it's just whatever you prefer. Okay, we are switching to our step three now. Good job, you guys, that was the longest step. These next few steps are fairly quick. So I'm gonna just go through and just put in the colors. And you can actually choose to paint. You don't have to leave anything white on here if you don't want to, but I wanted to leave the most of the wreath white um, and then just do pops of color around the edges. So I'm gonna paint my sunflowers and I'm gonna start with my cake pans first. And I'm just gonna use yellow because that's what sunflowers are. And I'm just going to use my round two and fill in the petals. You wanna make sure that the blue is dry around your flowers at this point or else they will bleed together and make mud so make sure they're dry now to get my sunflower center you need to mix brown and you can mix brown by grabbing a little bit of blue grabbing a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and sunflowers tend to have a dark center a darker center and then a lighter brown around the center. And I'm going to wait to do that lighter brown because this is just too wet right now. So I'm just going to do the dark center and the yellow leaves and then I'll come back and do the um, light brown center. And if you want to mix a little bit of red in there to get like a tint of orange, there's nothing wrong with that. Sunflowers are really warm yellow, so they would have that kind of orange hint to them. Okay. Now while that dries, I'm going to go over and do my sunflowers on the liquid side. And I'm just going to use my deep yellow. Again, you want to make sure that your blue is dry before you do this. If you want to do a more larger, in-depth sunflower, we actually have done a sunflower before. So just go to our videos and find the sunflower tutorial. But these ones are just small little babies. This one kind of reminds me of an eyeball. <laughs> the petals like look like eyelashes. Eyeball. Yeah. Or like a bug. <laughs> But don't worry, the colors will go a long way with this if yours is looking a little bit funky. Um, people will see smaller yellow petals, big brown center, and they'll be like, oh, sunflower, and they'll move on. So don't stress. And same thing for the brown, mixing the brown on the liquid. You're going to grab some blue, you're going to grab some yellow, and you're going to grab some red. Or you can mix orange with yellow and red and add black to it do the same thing. So I'm going to do my dark brown in the middle. Okay. And those are still wet, so I'm not going to do my um, light brown center yet because they're still wet. I'm going to move on to my leaves now. <laughs> I'm just going to make some orange. And the beautiful thing about maple leaves in fall is they are all different colors. So if you want to make some of them green, you absolutely can. I'm keeping mine closer to orange, but they're your leaves. Do drops of other colors in there. 
It's pretty. That is a nice leaf. Thanks. There's another one up here. This is this leaf got really funky. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm just gonna go with it. We'll see if it still reads as a leaf. That one I looks that not... one looks like it's been squished. <laughs> it's dried and shriveled up. Yes. It's disformed. Just that one leaf arm deformed. got formed. What'd you say? Disformed. Disformed. <laughs> That's not a word. It's lost a form. There we go. That one got crunchy and maybe pieces broke off. Yeah. It's windy. And then I did um, leaves right here. Okay. And then I will do the leaves on this side. So I'm going to mix my yellow with my red. I have one here. This one also got a little wonky, but not as much as that top one. And this is where negative space painting is hard for me because when I go to color it in, I'm like, what the heck shape is that? What did I do? <laughs> it's all right. It still reads as a leaf. Okay, now I'm going to put in my center of the sunflower. It's still pretty wet, but that's okay. If you want it to be super defined, then wait for it to dry. Going back to my liquid and doing the same on this. Okay. Now we have our red berries. I'm gonna do my cake ones first. Just gonna grab red and put it in these little dots. And this is why it's important to leave the spaces for them instead of just like painting on top because watercolor is transparent. So if I tried to paint a red dot on top of my blue, it won't be as vibrant. And I'll, I'll just do one now to show you what that would look like. So um, if I try to do a red dot right here, that's pretty dark. But if I'm doing it on the white space that I left out, then the red shows up much better. Okay? That's why we leave spaces for this. Whereas with like acrylic or oil, you could just paint on top of things. Okay. And then we have our lettering to do. That's our very last step. But before we do that, I just want to say that now that things have dried and you're able to like take a step back, you can see the shape of your leaves a little bit better. And if you want to go in and like clean up some of the areas, there's nothing wrong with that. So like this leaf, if I'm like, wow, okay, I can tell that that's a leaf uh, twig, but my stem is like way wonky. I wanna straighten that up. Kind of thin it out in some places and reshape my leaves because they got like too wavy or not as smooth of a line. You can absolutely clean them up. And that is up to you how much you wanna do that. Um, if you are like hanging this in your house or something, especially like on a mantle, if you put this like 10 feet away, you won't be able to see this part. So don't stress because like you can't, far away this is going to look really I'm great. I'm just picturing someone's house and I don't know whose house it is because it's just random house layout. But yeah. I'm picturing all these paintings like eight feet in the air along the ceiling. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone's looking at oh beautiful beautiful oh those are really great you're like thank you please don't look at them don't close. get any closer that'd probably be my house <laughs> there are it's so funny because i definitely feel like there are some paintings that i make where like while i'm painting it and i'm looking close i'm like this looks weird you know what i mean but then like you set it up and walk away or you take a picture of it and then you're like, hey, that looks pretty darn good. <laughs> or it looks worse, but most of the time it looks better. Okay. Now, before you do your lettering, you wanna make sure that the areas are dry because you, your wrist will be there. 
Um, and then what I did on this lettering is this is called folligraphy, which Nicole is actually teaching how to do currently. Um, but essentially what you do is you're trying to mimic the a calligraphy style by having thicker lines wherever your brush stroke goes down and thinner lines wherever your brush stroke goes up and how you do that. So here I already outlined my word and then if you want to like re if you want to do the thicker lines wherever I went down it gets thicker and then when you go up it's thin so you just kind of retrace it and then wherever your brush stroke goes down is where you make it a thicker line. I'm trying really hard not to plant my wrists in some berries because I know that those are still wet. So for my lettering, if you have a marker or a pen, it's easier for me to do folligraphy with markers and pens than it is a paintbrush. However, Again, we have so much educational material for you if you want to learn any of the ways, but we have a paintbrush in this box, so I will be using a paintbrush. I'm gonna turn my paper, so sorry. Sorry, Keenan. And I'm actually gonna do this in the pans. To clarify, yeah. we don't have a brush in the subscription box. Right. But for the You're subscription right. box, the right. projects we're using require brushes. We always use a round six and a round two for our projects, and so that is what I make sure I use when I paint these so I don't force you guys to buy new paintbrushes every month because that's messed up. <laughs> so I'm going to use a round two. So if you, hopefully you guys already have these brushes, and um, that's the size I'm using. But if you want new brushes. If you want, we're not going to discourage yeah, you from buying absolutely. brushes. We carry many sizes. <laughs> okay, so... This part's so scary, but I'm just going to go for it. Go for it. So I'm just kind of following my shape. I shouldn't have stopped halfway through, but it's okay. Nice. i got to reconnect this. Oh, not too bad. And then you can go back and thicken the part where it would be thicker. So you don't have to do it like at the same time. Okay. Not too shabby, Sarah, not too shabby. Let's keep going. Okay. Sarah, just go for a thick on the down. I'm not ready. You got it. <laughs> I kind of did with my T there. You just did that. But I'm going to thicken the top part. I feel like Nicole would be really proud of me. Would I? <laughs> okay. It's just hard when you do long curves. It's hard for me to make the curve like go without stopping. So like when I get to my O's and my B's that are bigger, I'm like, oh. but it's okay. You guys, we can do this. It's just a piece of paper, right? Yeah. Worst thing that's going to happen is it will turn out ugly and I just take this and throw it in the right. trash and paint again. Which nothing you create with your hands is ugly. Learning. Yes. Yes. Good point, Keenan. Okay, here we go. Down. Yeah. yeah, nailed that one right there. <laughs> nailed it. Risky, Backwards. risky. But you can always go back in and clean it up. Oh, yes. Okay. 
I would like to add a lettering tip. Yes, I would love to hear it. This would actually be a cool project to do an ombre technique Ooh. Um, with a different colored paint. Oh, that's a great idea since we're doing like ombre around the wreath. Yeah. Good idea, Keenan. So if anyone else is feeling risky, risky or brave, biscuit, or brave, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> oh yeah, and then nice. I just gotta cross my T. Light pressure. Good flourish, good flourish. Just a nice little boop. Yeah! Look at that! Darken it, I mean. Uh, mm, 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 mm. I just did that with my own hand. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Okay, uh, if you painted this with us, thank you so much. And thank you also for understanding why we're using both the pans and the liquids. Um, I hope it's not frustrating for you. I'm hoping I'm giving you enough information. And also, I just think it's good for you guys to see the difference as I'm painting. Now that I'm looking at it, I think with my liquids, I probably added a little bit too much black, which is why this is so much grayer than the right hand side. So if you want a more vibrant blue, just don't add as much black, not a big deal. And um, good luck with this. If you paint this with us, I wanna see it, so share it. You can tag us on Instagram, um, let's go make art, or hashtag let's make art. We have a wonderful Facebook group and it's separate from our business page. It's just a community for people who are learning or who are already watercolorists and they can just share their interpretations of the projects and also taking what they learn from us and applying it to their own work, which is always fun to see. It's great to be part of a creative community that is so supportive and understanding and really just your art cheerleaders because that's what you need sometimes. You just need someone looking over your shoulder and being like, you're doing great. You need a hype man. Good job. Yes, and we are your yeah. hype man. Also, the people in that group. Yes. You guys do a great job of hyping each other up. Keenan, calm down. I got excited. <laughs> I hit the table. Um, if you need any of these supplies, we carry them at letsmakeart.com. Both the liquid and the paints. 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 The pan paints. The paper, the brushes, all of that fun stuff. Palettes. What else do we have? So many things. This, if you need this, we have this. I was gonna list all the things you already said, so. <laughs> okay, I'm, we're done now. You guys did great, thank you, bye.